Hi, welcome to my channel. So glad you're here today. So this is my friend named Mike Miller, and he's lived in Taiwan for over 20 years. He's about to move back to America, so we're going to miss him a lot. But before he gets on that plane, I, I wanted to interview him and let you guys get to know him. And he wants to share some farewell words to you guys in Taiwanese. So stay tuned for that. When did you first arrive in Taiwan? We first arrived in Taiwan in 1987. We brought three little preschool uh, girls with us. We thought we were going to be here for a long time, but we were only here eight months because our baby, we found out, had uh, was not developing well later when we went back to America. Found out she had a brain disease. We had to remain in the States. We cared for her. And then in 2002, we had opportunity to come back to Taiwan with our two youngest children. Wow. So you've been here since 2002. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a long time. It's a long time. You've seen a lot of changes. In Lots Taiwan. of changes in Kaohsiung. We've lived in Kaohsiung the whole time. It has become such a beautiful modern city. I love Kaohsiung. What has been your job in Taiwan? So in 1987, we came to be missionaries, uh, Christian missionaries in Taiwan about 3% of the people are Christians, and we started learning Taiwanese because we were going to focus on Taiwanese ministry. Taiwanese, yeah, he can speak Taiwanese, so later you're going to hear some of his Taiwanese. You're about to retire, right? Right. So how did you decide it was time to go back to America? Four and a half years ago, I had a stroke here in Taiwan. Even though it was a mild stroke and I recovered, it made me realize what my priorities were. My priority was to love God. My priority was to love my wife and love my kids, my, now my grandkids, and then love people and do ministry. And I just came to the point of believing that for these 20 years, we really loved Taiwanese people and tried to build good relationships. But I felt like that we were really uh, falling down on our relationship to our kids, our relationship to our grandkids. Facebook Messenger and talking to our kids on the phone is just not just not the same. So we felt like while we're still healthy, we wanted to take our ministry and put focus on our kids and our grandkids and whatever else we're going to do. Yeah, and you are 66, right? 66. Yeah, so you you put good years in your career. I think it's so cool that you stayed in one city in Taiwan for so long. We were very fortunate because it's Kaohsiung is the best city in Taiwan. <laughs> a lot of foreigners, it seems, will live a few years in one city and another a few years in another country and uh, they kind of move around a lot. So I think it's really interesting that Mike stayed here for the, the whole time. Next, what places will you miss in Taiwan? I think we're here at Hope uh, Church and I think I'm gonna really miss being in this place. It's a great place to build friendships with, with men and women and older people like me and college students and kids and you. So I'm gonna miss this church as a place. Recreationally, I'm gonna miss Kandine. Can't because it was so nice being able to quickly get down there, snorkel, and just be at the beach. I think that'll be something, a place I'll really miss. I think just the convenience of everything in Taiwan. There's 7-Elevens everywhere. It's just much easier, I think, to live in Taiwan than it is in the United States. And we realize we're, we're in for culture shock. That's like a reverse culture shock. Reverse I culture shock. <laughs> I've been to Kending once myself. And Mike and his wife, Carolyn, they took us down there and they showed us their favorite spots over the last 20 years. And so we had like a, these awesome tour guides. So if any of you want us to come back and be a tour guide for you, if you'll pay our plane ticket, we'll come back immediately <laughs> and take you anywhere you want. Wow, and get lots of English <laughs> practice. <Yeah. laughs> what foods will you miss the most in Taiwan? Beef noodles, fried rice, gam sao gay. I really like shabu shabu, yong bao bao, and those kind of uh, restaurants, really, really like those. In Nanza, they have a restaurant called yong bao bao. Yeah. That one's really good. And your favorite it's drink? The fake passion fruit green tea. I don't really like the seeds, so I buy the cheap fake stuff. <laughs> 
you're gonna miss the the prices of Taiwan because it's cheaper to eat out yeah. than it is in America. Maybe twice as much yes. uh, price to eat out in America. Carol and I have already talked to not only maybe help us stay thin or get thin, we get to America, we're planning on go to a restaurant, we just buy one meal and and share it with each other. What will you miss about the people of Taiwan? <laughs> it's a real emotional question. Mm. We love Taiwanese. Mm. When we had to leave in 1988, it was probably one of the hardest times of my life. Mm. We love Taiwanese. Mm. Friendly people, uh, caring people. Uh, that's that. Mm. Those, those are the pe kind of people we're gonna we're gonna miss most. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You guys are gonna be missed a lot too. On a lighter note, what is a funny? cultural mistake that you've made over the years. I, I'll tell you two quick ones. One cultural mistake was, it was probably two years, three years after we uh, came to Taiwan that we realized that when someone gives you a, a gift bag or gives you a gift, a wrapped gift, you don't open it, you don't take the stuff out of the bag, you just receive the gift. And I think for the first two or three years we were here, I was getting gifts from people, opening it up. One day, a friend, and let me tell you, if you know somebody who's doing something that's culturally wrong, if they're a foreigner or not, whisper in their ear and say, we don't do that here in Taiwan. Finally, somebody did that. Said, Mike, we don't open the presents here in Taiwan like you do in America. It was kind of embarrassing because I'd broken those rules so many times. <laughs> the other thing was when I was ordering uh, a chocolate banana milkshake, from the drink lady and had called her on the phone from my house and said, I want one chocolate banana milkshake. I'll come down and get it. And so when I went downstairs and there on the counter of the drink shop, there were already four of these milkshakes on the counter. Mm -hmm. And I heard her grinding the ice in the background and I, no. I realized she's making another one. And I said, no, I just wanted one. So because my Taiwanese, I used the wrong tone to say, uh, uh, to say one. So I ended up buying five. Way too that many. was embarrassing. <laughs> Did you drink them all? I put them in the freezer. I think, <laughs> I, I think I ended up drinking them all, but. So here's an interesting question. What advice would you give for in improving Taiwan's already wonderful society? I mean, I wish everyone in Taiwan had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because I believe that's the the best experience, the best lifestyle anybody can have. I would wish that for everyone in Taiwan. One of the things I would love to see in Taiwan is just see the pressure taken off of children and young people, maybe not so much college students, but uh, elementary, junior high, high school, the pressure of not only going to school and going to class, but also going to the cram schools. It just seems like a lot of Taiwanese kids do not know how to play. They don't know how to have fun. I, it just seems like a whole lot of pressure. We have probably three or 400 kids go in front of our church here every day. I just feel sorry for them that they just can't go home and play maybe the way I did when I was a kid. And then I think the other thing I would change is I would encourage parents rather than try to motivate your kids through shame or, you know, you can do better than that. Uh, motivate your kids through praise and right. really encouraging them. It seems like in working with college students on campuses that Carol and I love to praise people because we love to be praised. And we can just tell, and many students have told us, that's the first time anybody has ever said they, they like the way I dress or mm. your, your English is good mm. because all they've ever heard is you could be better. And so I think that's one thing I, I really wish. Mm. And I think it would have such an impact on society if parents would, would develop a praise-based mm. approach to raising their kids rather uh -huh. than a shame base. So more encouraging yeah. uh, words. That's yeah. good. And you hope you hope maybe at night you could see more family time, play time, a social time. Yeah. Rather than too much study, 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 study. Right. Yeah. It can be hard to balance all these priorities. What is one of your best memories over the twenty years? It's not just one experience or one time, but it's what I've seen repeated over and over again 
is seeing Taiwanese men and women, young people, realizing that their, their worth is not based on what they do and what they can uh, live, live up to or hit some sort of standard. Mm. But they realize that there's a God who loves them and he has a plan for their life and his love for them is unconditional. And to see uh, Taiwanese men and women believe that truth and accept that truth in their life and see the change and the joy that it brings and the peace that it brings in, in their life, that is a great, that's a great experience. This next part I'm really excited about, would you share some farewell words to this island that you love? Use your Taiwanese to, to just share some of what's on your heart. And So and and Awesome. Wow. I, I love hearing uh, your Taiwanese. Thanks so much for sharing. Don't forget to subscribe, press the like button, and share this with a friend. And see you guys next time on Andy in Taiwan. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.